Stop 6. Death and Burial. Museum Gardens by the Sarcophagi in St Mary's Ruins. Descend from the city walls, cross the bridge, and enter the museum gardens on your left. Walk past the museum in the direction of the abbey ruins, and look away to your right, where you'll find two rows of Roman stone coffins. Roman cemeteries were usually found outside the areas inhabited by the living. They were arranged along the main roads approaching forts, towns and other settlements, allowing passers-by to pay tribute to the deceased. The stone coffins, also called sarcophagi, which you can see in front of you here in the museum gardens, were all excavated from other sites in York, most coming from the cemeteries beneath the current railway station. In the early Roman period, the dead were cremated. Archaeological evidence from here in York suggests bodies were burned either in a dedicated area or at the graveside. Graveside cremations are evidenced by areas of charred wood debris, fragments of burnt bone and coal ash. Pots in the shape of human heads were sometimes used to hold the ashes of the deceased. Some are on display in the Yorkshire Museum. These often depict Julia Domna, the wife of the Emperor Septimius Severus, and demonstrate a trend within funerary rites. Cremation was gradually replaced by burial in the 3rd century AD, although even in the 4th century the remains of cremated infants are found buried with their parents. Unusual forms of burial have been found, such as individuals in a crouched position, believed to have been a rite of the native population. At York's railway station site, poorer people were buried together in large pits. Cemeteries were often reused, with graves overlapping, perhaps due to space constraints. While this seems to indicate a lack of respect for those long dead, concern for the well-being of the recently deceased in the afterlife is evidenced by practices such as the inclusion of a coin in the mouth to pay the ferryman in the underworld. In contrast, these sarcophagi, some of which are elaborately carved, would have been used for the privileged burial expected by the very rich. Occasionally, lead coffins have been found, but wooden coffins being the most common form of burial from the end of the second century onwards. One of the most interesting ways of housing the dead was the tile tomb, a reconstruction of which you can see in the Yorkshire Museum. Usually this type of tomb was built of several plain tiles, tilted one against another. Many Romans were also buried coated with gypsum, a type of plaster that is still used on walls today. The gypsum has a preservative effect, leading to the survival of material and even hair, such as the auburn hair displayed in the Yorkshire Museum. The sarcophagi here are arranged in two rows above ground, with a passage running through the centre, which was the way the Romans also arranged them. The distinctive tiny coffin in front of you belongs to a child. Although infant mortality in Nibarakum was astonishingly high and life expectancy extremely short, with an average lifespan of 40 years, exceptions did exist. A tombstone in the Yorkshire Museum dedicated to Julia Velva records she lived to 50 years. The woman in the centre is Julia herself, while the man with the beard is her heir, Aurelius Mercurialis. He commissioned this tombstone while he was alive, not only to commemorate his family, but also himself. If you take a look around at the sarcophagi in front of you, you may notice the letters D, M on them. Many inscriptions in Eberarchum begin with these two letters, which stand for Dis Manibus, and mean to the spirits of the departed because Romans believed that the dead were taken care of by the divine in the next world. 
In these inscriptions on tombstones and sarcophagi, we can feel the sadness suffered by the living. Here is a grieving father, Quintus, who really did live in Eber Arkham, reading the inscription on his daughter's tomb. To the spirits of the departed, Corellia Optata, I, the grieving father of an innocent daughter, caught by cheating hope, lament her final end. Grave goods have been found in cremations, burials and in sarcophagi. In burials, they are often found adorning the body in the form of earrings, necklaces, brooches and hairpins. Other objects included vials of perfume as well as food and drink. Some of these may have been possessions of the deceased, while others were gifts from friends and family. Let's hear from Antonia, who we imagine has recently attended the burial of her friend Flavia. It gives me some comfort, you know, to remember that she was buried with everything most precious to her in life. The rings that she always wore, her favourite perfume and her fan. Of course we provided some food and drink for her to have in the afterlife as well. Death is a horrible business, so we might as well try to do all we can to reassure her spirit and ourselves. One of the most lavishly adorned of York's burials, the so-called Ivory Bangle Lady, is of a young woman from North Africa who was buried with bangles of white ivory and of black Whitby jet. She is an evocative symbol of Eber Arkham itself, a cosmopolitan city where local and global met, and she is best experienced in the flesh at the Yorkshire Museum. 